Hi, I'm Melinda Hemmelgarn, Food Sleuth columnist and registered dietitian, and welcome to Food Sleuth TV. Today, it is my great pleasure to welcome Bernadette Dryden, who is the slow food chapter leader for Mid-Missouri, but I really wanted to have you on to talk about both slow food and this great trip that you just took to San Francisco. It was the big slow food event mm -hmm. of the year, mm -hmm. maybe oh. of the century. Possibly the century. Yeah. Okay, so first we got to know, how did you get into slow food and what is it? Well, I, I've sort of been an unofficial member all my life because I grew up with a, um, a mother who loved to cook and very simple, grassroots, you know, southern kind of cook, but uh, wonderful and she taught me and it was her way of expressing love and so I grew up um, doing the same thing, following in her footsteps and always loved to cook. and. Um, <clears throat> and so I just did did that and cooked for friends and I've worked in, in the food business a little bit and um, you know given a lot of parties and and just started reading cookbooks and uh, mag food magazines when I was 20 and and um, went to cooking classes here and there and and um, so I've spent a lifetime doing it and and uh, when I got involved with this, when I heard about this movement uh, six or seven years ago, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is for me. This is what I've been doing all my life. And, and suddenly I don't have to be a, a voice in the wilderness anymore. Yeah. And there can be a whole other people who love the same thing. And, and um, so, so I got involved about six years ago. And that's and, really when the slow food chapter started in our region. Right. Right. And I remember you started it. And yeah, I think you're so right about... I think in all of us, in our core, because what else do all of us do three or more times a day? Mm -hmm. No matter what our race or our ethnicity, we all kind of grew up where food was something in right. our lives, central to our being. And we've sort of become this fast food nation. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, slow food was started, of course, by Carlo Petrini. And mm -hmm. as a response to McDonald's wanting to build if you can imagine <laughs> the audacity of McDonald's wanting to build a fast food restaurant in Rome, right? Right. And the Spanish Steps. Yeah, as, as if it you know could it get any worse. Yeah. So um, you met Carlo Petrini actually mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. What is he like? He is uh, fabulous. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's the heart and soul of the movement. He's uh, an Italian uh, from northern Italy in the Piedmont area. And um, uh, when he's, I don't know, probably mid 60s or, or so. Uh, very passionate, a wonderful speaker, uh, just very impassioned about, about food and, and the future of food. And, and to watch him eat is a wonderful thing, too. I, you've never seen anybody uh, take such pleasure in eating. Really? Yeah. Now, see, I didn't get to hear him. I, did, I, I got to hear him speak, but I didn't get to watch him eat. Yeah. That's a great story. <laughs> so does he eat slowly? Just sort of with, uh, yeah, slowly and just with, like he's tasting every single um, sensation. Yeah, in the food. mindful eating. Yes, mindful. There's a concept. Mindful. Well, when I heard him speak, he described good food. And we were talking about that a little bit before we started, mm -hmm. about how, um, you know, he described eat, is, is that slow food or good food is healthy, it's green, it's mm -hmm. good for the environment, mm -hmm. but there's also this socially and socially just and humane section in there. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how he was in California, he had this great meal, it was organic, it was delicious, it was fresh, nutritious, but the people who were harvesting it were being treated like slaves. Right. And as you know, I mean, just my whole mission too, um, sharing this passion with you mm -hmm. is that food, yes, it is nourishing, but but I don't, as I was mentioning earlier, I don't want blood on my food. Right. And right here in the Midwest, you know, we've got the farmland plant in Milan, Missouri, where workers are treated like slaves. We've got the Postville incident in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned that this was spoken about at the right. meeting. What did they say? Well, it, it was a passing reference to, to the situation in Iowa. and. Um, and they were talking about the, the three tenets of, of slow food, which is good, clean, and fair. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, good, it has to taste delicious and, and uh, be good for you and, and clean, uh, done in a way that, that treats the earth well and the animals and the plants and, um, you know, without polluting and 
pesticides and mm -hmm. um, and then fair, as as you were saying, the uh, treating the people who produce it, uh, giving them a living wage and and treating them right fairly. So uh, that was a one of the many topics um, in the at the event. Um, and what farmer, what family farmer couldn't get their arms around? You know, right. I think slow food, I, I think that it still has this kind of, you know, cloudy kind of fuzzy mm -hmm. definition. Mm -hmm. But if we think about, okay, who does this talk to? So you've got family farmers who are struggling to make a living wage. Oh, welcome right. to slow food, right? Right. right. And right. you've got uh, people who care about, you know, I think most of us, yeah. at least when we're young, yeah. we have this feeling or compassion for animals. Mm -hmm. Do we ever really lose that? But if we see how animals are raised in factory farms, mm -hmm. There's another group that cares about their animals. Right. And then, of course, you know, if you happen to be a dietitian, you care about the health of the food right. or an environmentalist. I know. It, 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 well, it's an organization that is, is probably misunderstood somewhat because it's so, it encompasses so many things. You know, it's a, I, I tend to think of it as an umbrella, and under it, there are the food enthusiasts who have been drawn to it because they love food, they love to cook, they, uh, love to eat and love to talk about food and but it, it's not just a social club it's it's a political organization I mean it's mm -hmm. it's people wanting to change the way we look at food in this country and well throughout the world but uh, Soul Food USA is primarily concerned about this country I mean we want to bring back um, the connection with food that makes it pleasurable and um, with a commitment to the community and the environment. And um, so we're trying to, so we do these grassroots um, organizing efforts and um, trying to get people excited about supporting all the great things that Slow Food USA and, and Slow Food International does. Um, and we'll put that website up at the end, okay. Bernadette, so that it, there's Slow Food USA, so people can go in and they can find their local chapter. Right. Because this show will also be shown in St. Louis. Okay. And is Becky Cook still the person Becky there? Marsh, yeah. Becky Marsh. Becky yeah, Marsh. Thank you. Yeah. She's the regional governor, Sarah N. Um, Hale. Um, well, we can find those yeah. names. Yeah. <laughs> we can find those yeah. names online. Steven. But I remember she did a butter tasting oh, at one of her yeah. meetings. You know, who, who'd have thunk yeah, it that that yeah. would be such a pleasurable thing to yeah. do? It was like tasting butter. Yeah, yeah. And I want to also mention that last month we had on a couple of teachers from Lee School and talked about the schoolyard efforts that really, that was your brainchild. And, you know, together, it was a spark. What could slow food do to get children reacquainted to slow food or good food so mm -hmm. that they're not... Mm -hmm. You know, a childhood obesity. I mean, right. how many more conferences can I go to on childhood obesity right. when the problem is at the grassroots level? Right. The kids are eating fast food. They're not learning about where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. And they love to, right. as your project at Lee School right. showed. So um, I don't know if you want to talk about that, because you're going to start another project in September. Yeah, just just briefly, and I, I have to give credit to um, that wasn't solely my brainchild, but Martha Folk, my co-leader, right, and uh, right. several other people in the in the chapter, but um, and Ann Mayer uh, and Carissa Seek, uh, we got together in January and and decided, you know, we'd been talking about doing something with schools, and it just never went anywhere. And finally, we we got it going, and um, the principal made a commitment and and to support the effort, and and so our fundraiser last year. Uh, drew, raise enough money to actually to start to do something so we could do these projects. And we took the kids, the third graders, we chose a third grade class and took uh, three buses at different times, three different weeks out to, of kids out to Goat's Beard Farm where they got to frolic with the goats and taste goat cheese and uh, see how it was made. Yeah. And they just loved it. Um, and then, then we built uh, raised bed gardens at the school um, in the spring, and um, our next project begins next week, actually, the, the biggest part of the, this three-pronged project. It's uh, called the Harvest of the Month. Right. And we're paying local farmers to bring in um, food that they produced. This, uh, Dan Kibler is going to bring in tomatoes next week, and um, some slow food people are going to be there to, to show the kids how to make salsa. 
and uh, with fresh tomatoes and um, not the Taco Bell no, taste. No, this will be no. real salsa. Real peppers, real garlic, real right. Cilantro. Fresh. Want, yes, fresh, 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 fresh. And we're going to see if we can find one of those really awful tomatoes in, yes. the, in the grocery store from wherever they come from. From many miles away. Um, and let them do a little taste comparison. So every month we're going to have a different farmer bring in potatoes, honey, eggs, whatever. Uh, and chefs in the community are going to come in, donate their time, show the kids, uh, cook something delicious with the, with the product, and then the kids will get to see it and, and participate and sample. And, they'll, and all these uh, farmers will be talking about what it's like to uh, grow food. You know, this is really brilliant on a number of levels. A, for the child nutrition, but there was a survey done. Well, of course, the average age of the average American farmer is well into their 50s. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask, you know, who is going to take over farming? Right. And there was a survey of kids done, and they asked them, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And, like, nobody really wanted to be a farmer. And I think part of the reason is because they don't know any farmers right. anymore. Right. So by bringing them into the classroom and hearing from them, you know, yeah. what is it yeah. that brings you to the soil? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. well, I like being outside. Well, who doesn't? Right. You know? Right. So maybe when somebody asks next year, what do you want to be when you grow up? Maybe there'll be more hands going up. I want to be a farmer, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So even if it just uh, turns one person into a farmer out of 60, it'll... That's right. That'll be a, a, a big improvement. Mm -hmm. Well, I was showing you before the show started that um, I just got a book from the um, National Gardening Association called Nourishing Choices about implementing food edu education in classrooms, cafeterias, and schoolyards. And I'll show that also um, on the screen. But it, what, what is highlighted in this book is exactly what you've done with Slow Food. And Slow Food is certainly one of the groups that are doing this. Mm -hmm. But it's this idea of reconnecting children to real food. It doesn't come in a package. It doesn't start from you know, genetically engineered corn or soy and then permutated into some sort of fabricated food. Mm -hmm. It's real food from organic, healthy soil um, that leads to healthy populations. And I know that probably in San Francisco you had some really great food, didn't oh, yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you eat there? Everything that California grows, I think it seems like uh, um, wonderful cheese, wonderful uh, wine, wonderful um, tomatoes, lettuces, and, and, and at Slow Food Nation, they had built a victory garden in front of City Hall that, I, I don't know how long it was. I, I mean, it's huge. They built it on with raised beds on top of the concrete for this event. And they're giving the, they're harvesting the produce and taking it to food banks now. Uh, but it was beautiful. And mm -hmm. it was laid out, you know, blocks long, or I don't know, it was very long. and and. Uh, and around the, around the garden, the opening of Slow Food Nation, there was an outdoor dinner for 500 people and mm. with just fresh, simple, beautiful food mm -hmm. uh, from local farmers. And uh, so, I mean, really, I, some of the best meals were just very simple and uh, fresh, fresh, fresh. Um, that's exactly right. Uh, and, you know, before we got on the air, we were talking about, you know, what kind of people's impressions of slow food that maybe, well, you know, that's kind of hoity-toity or that's upscale and that's mm -hmm. not for me. And, you know, I certainly have very humble beginnings and we had very simple food on our table. Right. We weren't gourmet, right. but we ate good, simple food. And I think that's what attracts me to the slow food movement is it's not about gourmet cooking. No, no. It's about simplicity. Right. What kind of food did you grow up with? Uh, Simple, uh, mostly iron skillet cuisine. Uh, yeah. I mean, fried chicken. Right. Uh, ham, baked ham, roast beef, pork chops, breaded pork chops. Uh, very simple, very hearty. Uh, meat three times a day. Um, and, uh, but just really fresh and, and really good. Right. When food was more local yeah, then, yeah. when there still were farmers, you know, bringing it in. Right. You know, I remember um, my grandmother um, was actually an immigrant, and she was, my, my mother suspects that she may have been illiterate, but mm -hmm. it was so shameful that she never really, you know, came forth with that. Mm -hmm. But she was looking at some fresh food one day um, out, like, being sold at a marketplace, and my mother had complained about the price of the food. And my grandmother, who had absolutely no education in agriculture and food, said, although she was a farmer in the old country, she said, look at it like medicine. 
And I think that, you know, when you look at the price yeah. of what, yeah. what our fast food diet has cost us right. as a society, right. you know, the idea of, you know, buying food in, and looking at it in terms of this is going to keep me healthy. Right. Exactly. And, and, and that's the thing I, it's so hard to convince people of that who aren't used to paying prices that are deserved for growing really good food. Um, it is more expensive, but you know, if you eat, if you know how to, if you learn a few simple things to cook and um, you'll eat less and be better for, I mean, you'll eat wonderful food and you'll be more satiated, I think. I agree. Um, by eating that good food and, and you'll want, you'll desire less. Mm -hmm. And so you won't be cramming yourself full of uh, processed, unhealthy food. Right. Um, so in the end, it, it really doesn't cost you anymore. And I, and I, you know, I take on the challenge of, um, I bet I can match anybody's health or um, food budget, um, mm -hmm. the average shopper who goes, you know, to our favorite store, right? Uh, big chain, big, big box store. And I bet I spend less a week on food than that person does. And and, and get more variety. And right. More biodiversity mm -hmm. and more nutrients. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was just thinking when you were talking about that, who told us that we don't have time to cook? Who like who planted that right. seed? Right. Because I think I saw a great bumper sticker one time. It said fast food is neither. <laughs> you know, it's not fast, really. If you right. think about sitting in the in the car waiting to go through that stinking right. drive through. Right. You know, and going in and eating this food that's traveled many, many miles. Mm -hmm. um, I'll bet you, if we had a cook-off, we could both put a meal on the table, lickety-split, right. certainly less than 30 right. minutes, maybe even 15, and it would be wholesome food. Right. So I think the food industry has sold, bought and sold oh, yeah. women on this yeah. idea, and men, oh, yeah. that we can't put healthy food on the table, and it makes me really mad. Right, exactly. And um, a couple things, one, one great saying I heard out there was, uh, if we are what we eat, then who wants to be fast, cheap, and easy? Uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what we've, we've been seduced by that. And uh, it, it's not true. And, and, you know, we're paying, it's not cheap. I mean, even though if you get eggs from a factory farm, we're paying for it as taxpayers. Get, the farmers are getting subsidies. And that's right. It's, you don't know that, but I mean, all these subsidized uh, big ag, agro right. industry um, farms. So you are paying for it one way or the other. And um, well, we kind of pay three times. We pay at the checkout. We pay then with our medical bills, mm -hmm. and then we pay to clean up the environment eventually. Right. Right. Or if we don't clean up the environment, we pay the price. You know, increased asthma rates, for example, for kids living in these factory farm right. uh, communities. Well, I like the point that you made. Was it Van D uh, Vandana Van Shiva? Vandana Shiva, thank you. Um, yeah, we had a great conversation <laughs> even before the show started. As soon as I saw you, it was like, oh, you've been at the fast food <laughs> meeting. Yeah. That we all need to be Rosa Parks. Yeah. And that eating is a political act. It is. And tell me about her. I love her. You know, uh, she is, she's an, in, uh, an Indian woman uh, from, I don't know where she's from uh, originally. Um, She's a scientist, I think, and yeah. um, she she says it. Uh, she's just very um, motivated, and she's she promotes saving seeds. And I guess in India there are um, 150, 200,000 farmers, small farmers, who have committed suicide because of. Um, Genetic modification, or the seeds, they haven't been able to, to save their seeds, the, right. whoever is taking them away, uh, because it's... Yeah. Um, so much for farmer independence. Not cost effect, or... Well, I guess it would be illegal. What, what's happening, and, you know, I, I, interesting that you brought this up, and I know Vandana Shiva mm -hmm. is really um, outraged about this whole idea of genetic modification. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all should be. Mm -hmm. We should all be Rosa Parks about this because none of those genetically modified crops or seeds have had long-term testing. They were pushed through by Dan Quayle. Mm -hmm. There will be no new laws to regulate this brand new technology. 
So, and I don't know the story that you know about the farmers in India, but even farmers here on American soil have been prosecuted and accused right. of using this genetically modified seed that isn't containable. Right. So it blows onto their farm and then they're sued. They mm -hmm. had no intention. We should all be saving our seeds. Right. Um, well, do we want to talk about the uh, Declaration for Healthy Food? Yes, I think that would be a perfect time to bring that up. At the most, one of the most exciting things of the <clears throat> at Slow Food Nation was uh, the meeting or the gathering of uh, all of us and and people off the street. I don't know who all was in the rotunda of the city hall there, and uh, but one of the Slow Food founding members, uh, Michael Dimmick. Um, is head of Roots of Change in California, and since California produces most of the country's agriculture, right, uh, it's kind of appropriate that it started there. And there, he and several other people in the food um, business, um, Alice Waters, uh, Mary Nessel, Michael Pollan, Wendell Berry, they all worked on this uh, declaration and draft proposal, and and. They took turns reading from it Aww. on the steps of City Hall, and including California legislators and um, the head of the American Corn Growers Association from Illinois, I think, or Iowa, I can't remember where he's from. He is someone who came over from the other side uh, when he saw, when he got disgusted with um, how it was going mm -hmm. in the um, agro-industrial. Mm -hmm. uh, Complex. Yes. <laughs> So, and Mike, um, Jim Brown is uh, another dynamo speaker in the, in, from the same ilk. He was a, a factory pork farmer, I think. Oh. And he's now a big proponent. And he wants to come, he's a thorn in the side of uh, Illinois legislature all the time, I think. And he's, he wants to come and teach everybody how to speak to legislators. He wants to go around the country and teach us how to talk to them so they can, so they can hear right. our voices about this. So we can take our food and country back? Right. Anyway, on, on the steps of City Hall, they read this declaration. Uh, what is it going to be? Right now, they're, they're fine-tuning it, um, and they're going to send it around. They want us to send it around for all our friends, uh, everybody we know, to comment on this. And, and, and then when the final draft proposal is done, uh, they're going to send it to Congress. And in a nutshell, it's, um, it's asking uh, Congress to to do something revolutionary about food in this country. Right. And because, I mean, slow food would, would not exist if the food system wasn't broken. Right. So, um... And I think we can just look around and recognize that it's broken. Yeah. You know, yeah. a friend of mine who um, does a lot of her food work in Iowa said that 90% of the food in Iowa is imported. Yeah. Okay. It's so they grow corn, soy, and hogs, yeah. and the the corn and the soy, at least, of course, are exported, made into these products, and brought back in. And in California, of course, people say, "Well, you know, can we do that here?" But Missouri still has small farms, and right. we used to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but does that declaration call for a return of a more diversified farm community? Uh, yes. I'm I haven't gone over this in the last couple of weeks, but um, yes, upholds a dignity, safety, quality of life for all who work to feed us and, and um, prevents the exploitation of farmers, workers, and natural resources. I mean, I don't want to read all this, but yes, it does do that. Um, That's a great line, prevent the exploitation of farmers and farm workers. Mm -hmm. I wish I had this statistic that I saw about the percentage of the food dollar that farmers got 30 years ago versus today. Right. It's even less than right. they got 30 years ago, and 30 years ago it wasn't all that great. I know. So, okay, so you know what we need to do? We need to talk about action steps. Okay. So what do you think? What does the declaration call on us to do? We'll talk to our legislators. Right, uh, and to learn more and express your support, there's the... Okay, so I'll put that up there too, right. fooddeclaration.org, mm -hmm. all right? And you can sign it and read it, and and if you like what it says, sign it and uh, bring that to 
book clubs, church groups, right, the, right. you know, over the fence. Right. Talk to your friends. Exactly, exactly. Um, more people, yeah. We're just trying to make people care and be aware of uh, what they're eating and, and how important it is to, mm -hmm. to know where your food comes from. Exactly. I was just going to say that. That one question, if we could just get everyone to start there. Where does my food come from? Mm -hmm. And with regard to our children at school, the work that you're doing, you know, certainly here in Columbia, helping children see where it comes from. Right. That's huge. Right. I think, um, was it uh, Imhoff yes. also was one of the authors was, on that? He was the, the major scribe, I think. And he, he wrote the book called Food Fight right. about the farm bill. And I always have to laugh about, I love the way this is, this is phrased, your Declaration for Healthy Food and Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you know, we've got food, and then we've got agriculture. Right. You know, it's like, hey, they're right. one. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, and, and uh, we also talked about they want to change the word. They want to get the word consumer out of the lexicon because it kind of removes you from the act of eating, you know, so instead of saying consumer, we're eaters. Okay, yeah. so that's the new word. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, consumer <clears throat> has such a, a hollow and detached ring about it. Don't You're right, think? yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're co-producers. Right. When we, when we eat this food. Um, and you know, uh, at the Slow Food in School meeting that I was uh, attended, there were two young women there who catered our lunch that day, and uh, they were asked specifically to cater lunch because it was a school lunch, and they have started a company in San Francisco where they cater to schools, and they had to go through the whole bidding process, and if you work for a, a, a bureaucracy, you know that everything has to be bid Right. Out. So they were able to match or beat the bid from the whatever concession that the, the schools were getting their food from, and they're providing uh, wonderful, organic, local uh, food for these kids at the same price. And so, don't our children deserve it? That? Yes, everybody deserves it. Everybody right. deserves to eat good food. Right. What, is there something <clears throat> in your heart that you want to share with the audience about your whole experience? With, uh, at? From slow food or just your own experiences oh, with food? Yeah. Well, um, I think there's nothing that serves a person better than knowing how to cook. Uh, yeah. And uh, I love what James Beard said one time, that it, if you know how to cook, you can be um, fat, ugly, and old, but you'll, you'll always have a lot of friends. <laughs> That's great. That is so great. <laughs> That's a great line to close on. Thank you so much for being here and talking about this movement. And I welcome all of you to join the movement with us. Yes. No matter what walk of life you come from, we all deserve good food. Um, so tune in again and uh, learn more and visit the websites. And thank you so much for watching.